Dear Leonard Blavatnik, we are sending you a copy of this video in your capacity as director and owner of the Deeside Aluminium Factory, which is making our lives such a misery. The noise and fumes referred to in this video affect a high proportion of residents living on our estate. Though the problems do not occur 24 hours a day, some of us are so badly affected we're near breaking point. We hope that you will agree that the current situation is not acceptable and that something needs to be done. Sadly, recent changes have not made any appreciable difference. We are not asking for the closure of the factory, only that those of us affected should have our quality of life restored. Being good neighbours should be in both our interests. Yours, Residence of Hendramela, Wrexham, Wales. Hello, I'm Mrs. Stubbett. I'm a resident of Pentamela Estate. I've lived here since 1960. And it was very, very, very nice. It was lovely, it was quiet, as you can see the estate. And quite suddenly, planning permission was given for a factory to go ahead, about 200 meters less than that at the estate, a decide aluminum. And it's been horrendous ever since. The noise, the smoke emission. It's unbelievable. Hopefully you'll be able to see and judge for yourself. Um, I just try not to open my windows, to be honest, much now. Um, the children don't go out and play like they used to because you worry for the safety and what's coming out of the factory. You just can't enjoy the garden. You go out in the garden and, and you get the fumes, you get the smell. Um, it's just not a pleasant environment to live in. This is actually happening in the day. You must excuse me for this bad feeling that I've had such a bloody mouthful. Excuse the language of that stuff, and that is the fitted language that goes with it. See it coming through the roofs? Everywhere. Everywhere there is. There's plenty of witnesses around here now. There's plenty of local lads. I'll take them to court if I need be. With me. We might be sitting here at say 9 or 10 o'clock at night and you'll see the whole factory, you can't even see it for the smoke and then it's just billowing out onto the main road. But the smells, and it's worse in the summer when you try and open the windows to sleep, um, you've just got to close them straight away. And like I've even walked past the factory you. and you have to like hold your breath to walk past me. it because it's that vile. Well at times we see large amounts of black smoke and contamination. Other times we get not much smoke, but some rather unpleasant smells coming out of there as well. And it does rather perturb us as to what actually is being discharged from the factory. Um, and no one really seems to know. It's Sunday night. <coughs> I've just had a phone call of Mary Pierce next door. Everybody's absolutely choking with fumes. I don't know if you can see it, the whole place is like it's a light now. It's actually the dross. It's glowing. It's, I can only take so long because the fumes are that bad. This is for the attention of HMIP. We still say there isn't enough evidence. You can see from the corner of our building here to the fence line, which would be in the order of maybe 65 feet, something like that, uh, us being in fairly close proximity to the aluminium company's boundary line. Uh, and it is right up against that boundary line where the dross is turned out. And hence the clouds of vapour, etc., um, tends to roll across this open ground here and of course enters the workshop and other buildings uh, in this this particular block during the winter months when the waste is tipped out <coughs> if it's damp like today and or if it's raining uh, the waste gives off a, vo um, 
and ammonia vapour, mm. which sometimes is extremely strong. It gets into the workshop here, mm. and of course it can't get out, mm. basically. <coughs> and the number of people that complain, we get drivers coming here, dropping off materials and things like that, and uh, they're really um, quite upset about it. How long has it been going on for? Yes, well, well I've been here five years, seven years. Yeah. And they've just been dumping the dross for five years? They've just, just, yeah, just dumped it. That is the impression you get with this. It's a bright magnesium type flare with a, a, a white to yellow light <coughs> in a ball, you could say maybe a couple of meters diameter of varying intensity, but white at its core. And I can understand what the local people are complaining about. Would you live here? Oh, I don't think so, no. And what time is it now? It's quarter to nine now. And this this will go on all night and get and get worse. This is the sort of thing we've got to cope with all the time. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, you, you can't get the smell that I'm smelling now from what they've just dumped there. Can you smell it? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> what it's kind? It's in the back of my my throat now and the back of my uh, nostrils. It's like a burning sensation. It is so mad, especially when we were here first. It's like an express train running under the window. It, it's really loud. And then if we close the bedroom windows to stop that noise, we get a high-pitched whining. And it absolutely drills your brain, it really does. Well, the only way I can describe it is, is a continual bump, bump, and a high-pitched whine as well, the two. And it vibrates in my pillow, something awful. It's like a drone, like an underground noise, like a vibration, and a noise that's constantly there and also crashing and banging. But at night time, it's a noise that gets on your nerves. You know it's there, and if it's not there, you're looking for it. I know it sounds stupid, like, right? But it's a noise that you're looking for. And if... If we move to the, the front bedroom, it's not too bad. But the bedroom John's in, hoo -hoo, there's no way I could sleep there. No way. Because uh, A, I'm a light sleeper, and B, this bloody noise is terrible. And it's, it's got to her more than me. Like. It's got to the wife more than me. It's, it's getting on top of her. It, it means you have sleepless nights. You, you can't have a good night's sleep every night. And it does mount upon you after a while. You do, you do become extremely tired. Um, and the effects that that brings. Those are in me. Those are in me years. And that on top. And still I can hear it laying on the bed. It's destroyed our family, what it's done to my parents. Um, my mum took some sleeping tablets in, um, I think it was February, because she couldn't take no more. Nobody knows how I've cried here. Nobody. Asking. Yeah. Right, shall we go down Dory's and see what the sound's like? We'll take the bonnet with us and have a look. Okay. I'll shut the door, I've got the key. Okay. Okay, ready? This is Drury's, back of Drury's house. 
which looks onto the factory. Okay, and what's the noise level? Yeah, let's have a look at the noises. Between 60, 62 and 64. The factory's yeah, just over no, there. Yeah, and there's no traffic coming up the road either, is there? So what, what do you think it was like living in the jury's house? Oh, it must be murder in there. Really must be murder in there because, oh, I don't know, I can't explain it. The noise in these houses is terrific. It must be terrible. It's bad enough in mine, so what it's like in there, I don't know. It must be terrible. And to try and sleep in there must be, oh, heck. Standing here, it's between 60 and 62. Where are we? Hmm? Where are we? Outside Daisy's, Mrs. Yakis's doorway. About how far from the factory? Oh, what would you say? 200. About 200, yards. something like that, yeah. Is this a normal day? Hmm? Is this normal? 64 yes, decibels? Yes, yes, yes. It has been louder. It has been louder. That's, this is normal. An average. I built this house to what it is, with Shirley, my wife, son Stephen and Ken. We were forced to leave this property after three years of fighting, which Rex and Miller Borough Council admitted that it was a major mistake repeating again. The fact from the noise, dust, vibrations, and all sorts of emissions, including dross. We were forced out of this property, no option. The property is now, now on the market and will not sell. We've lost everything. And because of that factory, D-side aluminium, that is the reason we've lost everything. I don't think you can say to anyone how you feel. You never sleep at night. You lose all your confidence. There, are, there aren't any words to say how you feel. I asked 12 months ago for a liaison committee. I just thought, rather than us enemies not never meeting, I thought if we could get together, we might be able to achieve something I was asked to stand in for somebody because they couldn't go the other way. I said, yeah, all right. It had to be agreed by Wolf Wright that I could attend. And on consulting his solicitors, they agreed, after my name and address were given over to the solicitors, it was agreed that I could attend. Wolf, Wolf Bright is Wolf Brett. Brett. That's the manager, is it? Yeah, yeah, he's the MD. And he would draw a list of certain names that would not, he would not agree to attend the meetings. And he literally threw me out. So I don't think it is a fair setup at all. We're amazed that although we can hear it most of the time and see what's happening most of the time, that the local council and the environmental health don't seem to pick up on it. It's a waste of time complaining because nobody's doing anything about it and the council aren't doing anything about it. They did once. And, uh, and thought they had enough evidence to prosecute. And I think it was last, the end of April, beginning of May last year, and it was really, really noisy, and we complained. And they came out, and then they said we did have a case, and they were definitely taking them to court. But nothing ever came of that. They failed to prosecute. We never heard anything until, I think it was February, where it had gone past the date and they couldn't prosecute them. And here we still hearing the noise. Things have not improved at all.
We stood out there for 20 minutes. I don't know, it might have been longer than that. Oh, it was a good. And the police come and ask us what we They stopped the traffic after. with placards in the middle of the road. In the middle of the road, we stopped all the Arctic wagons, blocked both sides of the roads right through. And the police what? come and asked us to move. Why do you do it? To because try and get some aluminium. attention. Because of Deeside Aluminium. It's simple. We tried having meetings and everything, and nothing happened. So we went on our own back, didn't we? I took a video, recorded it, gave it to HMIP just on one occasion, and this, they fined Deeside Aluminium just under £20,000. We've done a huge amount of work, correspondence going backwards and forwards with the HMIP, the Wrexham Council, the Environmental Health Department. It's been going on for quite a long time now. As you can see, if you look at all this correspondence, this is all to do with the Deeside Aluminium problem. I got a phone call from some uh, residents here asking me to come down and listen to the noise. Um, I came here about half past eleven in the evening and uh, was taken all round the estate and heard the noises at different levels. I mean, it sounds something like a, a fan, I would imagine, a very large fan, and um, you know, I can understand why it's keeping them awake. You know, people wouldn't phone me up at such a late hour uh, if if they were asleep. So the point is, they must be being woken up by the noise. And I think it's something that you know we need to look at and, and work with the company to see how we can solve the problem. Yeah, I, I, I just don't know what to say. Uh, they're dumping it there. I mean, say there's nothing can, can, to contain it. It's got a bit of a roof on, but there's no, there's no sides. It's completely open. It's about 100 yards, uh, 100 foot away from where it was before, which was there. And they say this has solved the problem. This is the planning permission that they have had granted because it was going to stop the problem with the dross. The fumes and everything are still going to come out. There's nothing to contain it. So if the owner of the factory was here right now, what would you, have, what would you say to them? Right. What exactly are you discharging? Are they carcinogenic? What other um, is there any dioxins in them? You know exactly what are you pumping into the air? What we can see and what we can't see. Reduce completely the noise. Listen to us, and I challenge you to come and live on this estate for a period of time. Shirley's house is empty. Yeah. I'm sure she wouldn't object to you living there. I just want to see tighter controls on the place. I want to be sure that it's being monitored. I want to be sure that the, that the stuff that they're pumping out isn't causing me and my family any problems. I want to be able to sleep at night. I want to be able to enjoy the garden. Just put reasonable guidelines on. Well, if they can run it quietly during the daytime, you could, should surely be able to do the same at night. They should get their act together and, you know, and try and sort this out amicably, really. We've been out of our home now for some eight months because of the noise, the emissions out of that factory. And the thing we'd like most in the world is to go back and live in our home in peace. We want it quieter, to certainly let us sleep at night, get it quieter at night. Invest in your factory a bit more.